The year was 1980. I was driving a 1979 Silver Anniversary Trans Am T-Top with the infrared dash. <laughs> yeah, I was cool back then. Having driven uh, back and forth to the embryonic church that I was starting up in the hills of West Virginia, Montgomery specifically, I was coming back down the road uh, from my hour or so trek up there uh, to minister and was just coming up over the hill when I came up over the crest and there was a horrific car wreck, a terrible car wreck. I don't, one was coming eastbound, the other car was coming westbound. Somehow they had gotten, and one had gotten in the other one's lane. I don't know what happened exactly, but it was a terrible car wreck just on the other side of the hill. I hit my brakes to avoid being included in the car wreck, pulled over to the side of the road and ran over to a victim who was slumped over in the seat. I was a young man. I'd never seen uh, such a horrific uh, car accident. And I ran over to the window, the glass was shattered, glass was everywhere, the man was bleeding, his head was against the steering wheel, and I asked him a question. I said, do you want me to call the police? And he turned his head, blood running down his face, he said, no, call an ambulance. I ran away and I thought, yes, I'll call an ambulance. And I did exactly what he told me to do. I never forgot that moment. I knew when I asked him, Did you, do you want me to call the police? I knew I had said something foolish, but I didn't exactly know why. Have you ever said something and as the words were coming out of your mouth, you thought, catch them. <laughs> They're getting away. They're getting away. They're getting away. Send your horses out and bring them in so nobody will know that you are stupid. I did not. <laughs> I did not realize my, in my youthful exuberance and the lack of experience, I'll, I'll blame that. <laughs> uh, I did not realize that to a person who is bleeding on the side of the road, it doesn't matter who was at fault. Why call the police? He wasn't concerned about who would get a ticket or who was responsible for the accident. But the level of accidents that I had experienced had afforded me the luxury of being preoccupied with who was at fault. But when the injury is severe enough, when the damage is overwhelming, when it is intense and life-threatening, no one cares really about who is to blame? They want somebody who is solution-oriented, who can solve the problem, and I didn't understand, but I came to reflect on that statement. I can still see him looking at me saying, no, call an ambulance. It occurs to me, are we calling the police to hand out citations when we should be calling an ambulance? This is the potter's touch. Greetings in the name of the Lord. We have been talking about blind faith and we're going to continue that conversation today, but we're going to take it on from another perspective. Whenever things get derailed and they go crazy, the first human propensity, the question that we ask uh, more often than not is, Lord, why? I want you to understand that some things are unexplainable, so you cannot waste time blaming this one or that one or whose fault it is. You just got to deal with it and go forward. I'm going to be talking about the blame game. Watch those toes. I'm going to step on some today. Take a look. There are some things that just happen. Beyond reasoning, as much as you worship your intellect and your ability to understand and how smart you think you are and how much you think you need to understand, there are some things that just happen that are beyond intellectual resolution. You will not get closure trying to understand it. There are some calamities, disaster, destructions, hurricanes, tornadoes, calamities that just happen. The Bible says indiscriminately it falls on the just and the unjust. It doesn't matter how holy you live. It doesn't matter how wild you are. Some stuff just happens to you. Stop trying to rationalize everything. 
they looked at this man born blind and they says to Jesus, who sinned? This is the human attempt to rationalize how did I end up like this? If my father would have raised me, I wouldn't have been like this. If, if my mother wouldn't have given me to my grandmother, I wouldn't have. You would be surprised at the questions lurking over the heads of the people in this room about how did I end up right here? And you'd be surprised how many people get the blame for the disappointments you face every day and for your lack of vision. That's one of the great things about getting older. You, you get to go to the adult level of having children and watch them blame you. <laughs> like you blamed. Isn't it funny when the shoe is on the other foot? Uh, yeah, you can't say anything. Just that's gonna have to soak in on you. Sila. They are having this discussion about a blind man who has said nothing at all. This, this blind man is not to be confused with other blind men in the scriptures. For other blind men cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me that I might receive my sight. But this blind man said nothing at all. He didn't even ask to be healed. He, it, it, the Bible says Jesus just came upon him. It's almost like he stumbled upon him. And the blind man is standing there in his blindness and they are having a discussion about him that does not even include him. Have you ever had people have a discussion <laughs> about you that, that doesn't even include you, like you're not even there. And they're having this big debate and they're standing there. Not a man is blind, but he's not. Not deaf. And they are having a discussion about him as if he could not hear what they're saying. Who sinned? They're having, they're having, they're having a discussion, a, a learning moment about a personal crisis in his life. Isn't it funny how people will banter easily about things that cause you great pain? And they'll discuss with frivolity things that put you in a crisis mode and they'll do it so cheaply as if you had nothing invested in your own life. What gives them the right to, to have this conjecture as to how I got there? Have you ever been blind? What did your mama do? What, what gives you the right to make assumptions about my mother and father? You have not even met my mother and father. And how dare you be an authority as to how I got in there? You're not even blind. How do you know? But the problem with the world today is everybody is an expert on everybody else's life except their own. And Jesus rebuked them. He told them, you don't know what you're talking about. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't know what you're talking about. You think you got my situation all figured out? You don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I can't figure it out and I'm the one living in it. Ain't no way you could know me two or three years and figure out something that I'm still scratching my head at 55 trying to figure it out. The truth of the matter is the answer to the mystery 
of how you came to be where you are is not in your head nor in the heads of the people who speak into your life, but in the mind of God, there is an answer to every situation that you face in your life. That's why you don't have time to worship me or him or her because they don't know what they're talking about. Only God knows how you ended up where you are. And there's nothing like being the victim of somebody else's rage misallocated toward you because they want to blame you for their dilemma. You'd be surprised at the people in this room who are living with somebody else's blame. Subtle, subtle blame, subtle blame. Not the kind of blame that causes a fight it's just the kind of blame that makes you know not to stay over there too long on Thanksgiving. Because y'all can, y'all can enjoy a meal, but if we stay over there too long, somebody's gonna say something that sets it off in here. Oh, nobody knows what I'm talking about, that's all right. God bless you. See you next time. No, I'm the only person who understands these careful little relationships where you got to tip on the eggshell. Have you ever been in a room and you wanted to say something and you went, <sighs> because if you really said what you really thought, it would turn the entire evening out. These little relationships are laced with the strychnine of secret blame. You can't taste it. You just feel the effects, the loss of intimacy, the lack of connectivity, the loss of genuine love and admiration. Swallow it up because you blame me for something that I should not be blamed for. Who sinned? Who sinned, his mother or his father, that he should be born blind? If sin would make babies go blind, every kid in here would black out. Now, see, people don't like me because I tell the truth. Every kid in here would be walking around talking about, oh, mom, I can't see. Yet people can become so self-righteous that how can you say that my parents' sin made me blind and your kids blind? Still to come on the Potter's Touch. If you got too much going for you, I can't show off. But when all hell is breaking loose and you're down for the count and there's no way in the world you can get up, God said, that's when I can show up and show them that I have been with you all your life. Oh my God, I wish I had some help this morning. The emptiness of an open heart creates a cavity for God to fill, but a closed mind never receives anything from God. The only difference between you and the person you admire is the perspective they have on life. When the one who gave you sight says, follow me, let me lead the way, it's time for blind faith. Don't allow people to anchor you down as an albatross around your neck and leave you limited so that they can have fellowship and you can have failure. If you are disciplined, in your perspective, you will be victorious in your outcome. For helping us reach others with your best gift, we would like to give you Blind Faith, four insightful messages on DVD, and as a bonus, receive pecking orders on DVD with a 2013 photo calendar reminding you that God wants to position you for impact, expose you to powerful experiences, give the courage to step out in faith, 
and the knowledge to make a difference. Just visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2 today. It is arrogant for a finite mind to think that you understand an infinite God. You must go back for the second touch and sometimes the third touch. If you think about Jesus going back into the Garden of Gethsemane over and over again so that he could walk away saying to his disciples, sleep on, I've got it. We can't go in and pray one time and walk away and think that we've got orders from headquarters. You have to really go before God every day to get new information and new insights and more clarity because sometimes you walk away and you heard what he said, but you didn't get what he meant. And I encourage people to be humble enough to admit you don't know everything. The emptiness of an open heart creates a cavity for God to fill, but a closed mind never receives anything from God. Going back a second time and a third and a fourth is what separates champions and conquerors from failures and defeatists. And by the way, you ought to be blind too, because I knew your mama. I'm sorry, I'm back. <laughs> Woo! Come back, that, that got away. <laughs> Woo! I had to catch up words, I'm telling you, they will run away from me. Jesus says, Jesus rebukes the accuser. There, there are always accusers in your life. Now you must understand this, the spirit of accusation does not start with men. It starts with Satan. Because Satan is an accuser of the brethren. And you must understand the spirit of accusation hovers over the head of every human being in this room, accusing you of something, blaming you of something, creating, suggesting, sowing seeds in your mind for which you have to deal with guilt over things you had no real control over. Who are you anyway? Are you God? That your actions could control somebody else's outcome? But when the spirit of accusation comes, people will accuse you as if you had more influence than you actually did. Maybe you contributed to the problem, but there are other people who contributed in like manner and they didn't turn out like that. There are other people who walked away. There are other people who were irresponsible. There are other people who didn't spend as much time with their kids and their kids turned out right. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. It's so easy to say, I'm like this because. And as long as you assign blame to other people, you can never regain control. The moment you say that it's something his mother or father did, then he cannot do anything to fix it. Now the miracle must move from the blind man to a discussion with his parents because if what they did caused him to be blind, they're going to have to do something to undo it. I hope you brought your brain with me this morning because I just said something heavy. If you ended up where you ended up because of somebody else, then you can't fix where you are. They have to fix it. Isn't that a lot of power to give to somebody else? Jesus rebuked them, recognizing the spirit of accusation comes from the spirit of Satan, who is an accuser of the brethren. And there is an accuser in your life right now accusing you every time you get up, accusing you every time you have a happy moment that you don't deserve it, that you have no right to it, that you should be ashamed of where you are. There is an accuser that reigns on every good day, threatening you of a bad day, holding you hostage in your own mind, bringing up things for which you cannot change and have no control over in your life to torment you. And every time you go down, there is an accuser saying, you brought that on yourself. There's always a voice that that you wrestle with. See, I don't have time to fight with you. I got to fight off all them voices that are talking in my head, telling me to give up and die. 
But I'm so glad that the blind man didn't have to rebuke the accuser. Jesus rebuked the accuser and said, you're wrong. I have an attorney that will plead my case when you make assumptions about me. I don't have to fight for myself. Jesus rebuked his own disciples, said, neither sin. Watch this. But it was done for the glory of God. How can God get glory out of blindness? I made him like this so I could be glorified in this. My strength is made perfect. That's what God said. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. If you're too strong, I can't show off. If you got too much going for you, I can't show off. But when all hell is breaking loose and you're down for the count and there's no way in the world you can get up, God said, that's when I can show up and show them that I have been with you all your life. Oh my God, I wish I had some help this morning. thought when God got ready to show his glory, he would show it through perfection. Perfect stuff. I remember when he called me to preach, I said, Lord, you should get one of the good people. Don't be calling me, cause you know, you know me. And come on, man, you know me. You know I'm about to mess this thing up real good fashion up in here. Get one of those good people. One of them little goody two shoes, nicey people who, you know, one of them. That was back when I still believed that they existed. <laughs> uh, yeah. I did not know that God could be glorified through something that was not beautiful. <laughs> to something that was not perfect. He said, this man is like this, not because of what his mother did, not because of what his father did, but I planned his blindness for my glory. That's why you single. So I could be glorified in your singleness. That's why you're married. So I could be glorified in your marriage. That's why your home isn't perfect. So I could be glorified in the imperfection. I made it what it is so you could see glory in a way you couldn't see it. Don't fix it, be glorified in it. Oh, y'all don't, don't want to talk to me. I wish I had some help this morning. I wish I had some help. I wish I had some help. I, The only reason we have a need to blame is because we're disappointed in the outcome. And the disappointment in the outcome suggests there's something wrong with where you are. So the way you cope with the disappointment with you is by blaming me. <laughs> so you make me your scapegoat but Christ already is. That's too theological, I'm not gonna bother that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drop over into that. Christ says, don't blame his mother, don't blame his father. Whatever was wrong with them, I could have made that work. He said, if you're gonna blame anybody, blame me. because I'm going to use his blindness for my glory. <laughs> Woo! I'm gonna use her brokenness for my glory. 
I'm gonna use his emptiness for my glory. I'm gonna use her thirstiness for my glory. Don't make them over, leave them alone. Stop trying to fix them. That's my child. Leave her alone. I made her this way because I have an appointment with her and when the time is right and the stage is set, I'm gonna heal her where I can get the most glory. Somebody help me pray them just 10 seconds. Touch five people and say, you have an appointment, you have an appointment, you have an appointment. You have an appointment, you have an appointment, you have an appointment. You have an appointment, you, you, you have an appointment. Yeah, you have an appointment. You have an appointment, you, you don't even know it. You don't even know it, you don't even know it. You don't even know it. You're just sitting on the side of the road, minding your own business, not even realizing that you have an appointment with destiny. You don't have to fast for it. You don't have to pray for it. You don't have to beg for it. All you gotta do is do you. And while you do you, I'm gonna meet you in the middle of the road. Oh, I don't know who this is for, but this is for somebody. Sit down, sit down. We just talking about it. We just talking about it. I don't know why y'all keep jumping up, but I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel the spirit of the living God. I feel the glory of the Lord. The blind man said nothing. And the miracle came to him. We'll be right back after this. The emptiness of an open heart creates a cavity for God to fill, but a closed mind never receives anything from God. The only difference between you and the person you admire is the perspective they have on life. When the one who gave you sight says, follow me, let me lead the way, it's time for blind faith. Don't allow people to anchor you down as an albatross around your neck and leave you limited so that they can have fellowship and you can have failure. If you are disciplined, in your perspective, you will be victorious in your outcome. For helping us reach others with your best gift, we would like to give you Blind Faith, four insightful messages on DVD, and as a bonus, receive pecking orders on DVD with a 2013 photo calendar reminding you that God wants to position you for impact, expose you to powerful experiences, give the courage to step out in faith, and the knowledge to make a difference. Just visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2 today. The world is in chaos. Our churches are under fire. Our leaders need a new set of tactics and strategies. Let them know. It's coming. T.D. Jakes presents Pastors and Leaders 2013. No church left behind. Sign up today. I'm out of time, I have to stop there, but it's been delightful to share the word of the Lord with you. I'm excited about where God is taking you. I believe God is gonna do great things in your life, and I don't want you to deter your steps by getting caught up in excuses and issues and problems, the blame game. You've gotta get beyond it and start walking out your destiny, even when you can't see your way clear. This blind faith thing is for you. Take care now.